I'm Nina. I'm the um, category manager at all for all textiles at Zalando Lounge, the um, shopping club uh, for Zalando. Um, I started my career at Zalando six and a half years ago um, as a buyer for lingerie and women's wear. Then worked myself my way up to um, becoming a senior buyer and um, moving to the full price business uh, in the fast fashion department. And um, now I'm the category manager at Zalando Lounge. Um, before that, um, I started my career actually with an internship at Hugo Boss, um, then moved onwards to um, Bread and Butter and another online retailer before actually joining Zalando. Okay. Um, <laughs> hi, I'm Claire. I'm currently team lead on women's young fast fashion at, at footwear at Zalando Category Management. Um, my career, I've been here for almost two years, coming up two years in September. Um, I've been within the fashion industry for 12 years now, starting in uh, private label and um, working with UK online retailers such as Boohoo, Misguided. I started my career as a buying assistant and worked my way up to a senior buyer and came here to Berlin, relocated with Zalando to become team lead, which is my current role. The role of a buyer at Zalando Lounge um, is actually very diverse. Um, mainly there are two parts of the job. First, you have the, uh, the job, um, the part in the office, where you're doing like daily tasks like um, getting offers in from suppliers, checking them, maybe renegotiating terms and condition, and then selecting the articles. In our business, it's mainly from Excel files or from line sheets. But you also, of course, have to monitor sales and analyze, um, analyze the current um, campaigns, um, etc. But then again, you also have a lot of supplier meetings, which is very important for us, um, either strategical nature or acquisition um, appointments, as we're always on the hunt for new brands. Um, when you think about what it takes to be a buyer at Zalando Lounge, I think it's important to understand that there are basically two major aspects. Um, one, you have to have some attributes of a sales rep. Mm -hmm. You have to be very communicative and um, convincing and compelling because um, as we are dealing with overstocks, which are limited, we are not sourcing from a broad um, portfolio, um, but we are also a bit in competition with other with other um, shopping clubs. Mm -hmm. So um, yes, therefore you have to have a bit of the nature of a sales rep. Once um, you actually receive the offer, um, you're switching back into the buyer mode, and you have to be very analytical. Um, you have to negotiate very well, as we are also always negotiating on a very high level a lot of the times with sales directors, but also with CEOs. So you have to be very comfortable in negotiating. Yeah, I think yeah. there's some similarities for a buyer mm -hmm. at category management as well. I think mm -hmm. confidence, being a risk taker is mm -hmm. really, really key for a buyer. Um, the buyers are constantly traveling all around, all over Europe, um, seeing the, the brands, making sure that they're having strategic meetings. Um, kind of a typical day for a buyer at Zalando is looking at your sales, so looking at your portfolio, how your current brands are performing, um, optimizing on best sell, best, sorry, best sellers, um, making sure that you can move on, update, and push those styles as, as well as possible, but also looking at what risks you have. So not everything is a winner, so understanding what we do with those, those particular styles and communicating with the brands to, as I say, optimise and de-risk in your current season. Um, and I think that's kind of the, the backbone of what a buyer is, having those strong communication skills, understanding what your winners are in the season. Also communicating internally, so not only with the brands, but um, internally with your planners, your buying assistants, making sure deadlines are met, because in fast fashion that's key, that we are completely keeping up with the, the fast-paced environment. So um, really diverse kind of role for a buyer at Zalando. Mm. The team at Zalando Lounge consists. The team um, at Zalando Lounge uh, consists of twenty-four buyers. Um, we are divided into two categories: textile and non-textile. We have um, mainly buyers, junior buyers, and a few seniors. Mm -hmm. And we are actually separated into different units, um, which are kind of the mirror to our customer clusters. We have fashion and lifestyle. We have modern classics, sport and outdoor, premium kits, um, and lingerie. And um, within those units, um, we usually have one lead buyer who is like um, organizing sales that are um, being run on with brands that are um, available in more for, for in more than one unit, for example, in textiles, but also in shoes. 
Okay. Yeah. And for us, it's um, <clears throat> half the size of yours. So we have on Young Fast Fashion uh, 12 buyers, uh, 12 of a buying team, sorry, um, that consists of four buyers, two assistant buyers, and the remaining team members are buying assistants. Um, I'd like to think, you know, to pride ourselves on working very closely. We're constantly bouncing ideas off each other. Um, we have regular meetings to understand what are the hottest new brands that are coming up to make sure that we're first to market and we're acquiring them as soon as we can. Uh, so um, being out in, at trade shows, talking, being on social media, understanding who those hot brands are and uh, making sure that, yeah, we have them first to market. Um, the team is um, very strong. We constantly communicating. And I think um, it's a really, really good team that we work with at Zalando. Our main stakeholders are our brands, actually. We are traveling all over Europe in order to meet uh, our brands, have um, either acquisition meetings with them or strategical meetings, and making sure that we have a very close relation to them. Um, on the other hand, we, of course, have also internal stakeholders, um, like a merchandising, my merchandising team, um, a campaign planning team, but um, also our stakeholders are from the full price business, so buyers, I guess, from your team, yeah. who are actually communicating very closely to our buyers. Okay. For us, yeah, we, um, we're we out constantly, I'd say probably a couple of times a week, looking at um, visiting our stakeholders. Um, we go through strategic meetings, understand the current performance, um, and I think for us it's with our stakeholders and with the buyers, one of their most important collaborations is to understand um, what's next. So not only the current, the here and the now, but what's next, how do we keep growing, how do we keep emerging to those next things. Um, I think for us, we're currently trading the spring summer 18, but we're also looking at autumn winter and also planning for spring summer 19. So it's for the stakeholders and the buyers to constantly be juggling these three yeah. seasons at once, which is um, a real skill, yeah. Mm. The customer strategy of Zalando Lounge is actually offering exciting fashion moments throughout the entire year. Our customer is more of an impulse-driven customer, meaning that he's actually looking for a great brand combined with a good discount. He's not looking usually for a certain piece, let's say um, a black shoe, for example, but he's really attracted by um, the brands that are communicated in our newsletter combined with a good price. So like guaranteeing these right impulses throughout the year, that is our biggest challenge uh, regarding our customer strategy. Yeah, for us, the customer mm -hmm. is, um, you know, key. It's understanding our profile, who she is, what she wants and when mm -hmm. she wants it. That's so important for us. We've had a lot of lessons um, as to buy now, where now, and we make mm -hmm. sure that we're trying to control that as much as possible. Um, our customer is the 16 to 25 year old core customer. We make sure that with our brand selection that we have, that we have the most up-to-date styles with from those brands. Um, brands such as On Young Fashion, Aldo, Steve Madden, um, Dr. Martins. And then within fast fashion, we have brands such mm -hmm. as New Look, Topshop, um, Public Desire. And we're working really closely to understand what the customer needs are and that we're meeting mm -hmm. them at every point possible, really. It's interesting. Yeah. Well, as a buyer's pick, I have uh, this beautiful yellow dress with me. A lot of flowers, um, as we're actually still believing in floral dresses and long dresses, web dresses. Um, yeah, they're actually still very big this season. Yeah, How about you? <laughs> similar for us, and mustard has been a really, really key colour for us this season. Um, as I'm from the footwear department, I wanted to highlight some footwear. So for us, it's all been about the dad sneaker. We've had a really good success um, for the start of the season, and we're confident that this is going to really drive sales for the rest of the season as well. So all about the 90s revival, the big chunky outsole. Um, this is the buyer's pick for footwear. Yeah, and now we would have some um, time to chat, actually. So if you have any questions, just um, send them in. Um, we have a question here that I'm happy to take. So one of them is, I'm from a pi private label background. Can I still apply for the branded positions? So um, this is completely my background. I came from a private label. 
um, having gained 10 years experience in private label. I think the, the experience that you gain from that, that you can carry across to wholesale, is completely um, relevant. You, you have a better understanding of um, lead times, the struggles, the um, cost price negotiation. And I think the skills that you acquire, such as negotiation skills, um, can be applied to the conditions that you may have to negotiate internally here at Zalando. So skills that you acquire, having a keen eye for trend, understanding what the customer needs, um, the intake curve, and also um, understanding timing from a lead time perspective, having dealt with China and the Far East for a long time, building in those expectations and managing those expectations from a wholesale side, I do feel is, is a really nice transition from one side to the other, for sure. I actually also got, just got another question, how important is German at Zalando? Um, well, English is our company language, so um, however, if you are interested in learning Germans, um, Zalando is offering German lessons for everybody who is interested in them. But yes, you can get along with English as well. Yes, as I do. <laughs> Currently speak no German, unfortunately. Um, I can take another one here. Um, do I need to move to Berlin and relocation? So, um, it is important to be office-based. Um, there's a lot of flexibility, which is an amazing thing about Zalando, um, the opportunity to work from home, um, and also the fact that the buyers are out so much anyway from a buyer's perspective they're in and out of the office so relocation is i would say key but um there is flexibilities that are built into the company as well well um there's another question and um, where are you lo located in berlin um we have actually a lot of um, offices in berlin i believe it's six at the moment um, I'm located uh, in the Zeukhofstraße, but I believe Claire is actually in another building. I am. Right? I'm in B&B, which is in Friedrichstein, um, so mm -hmm. not too far from where we currently are today. Um, but yeah, they're located all over Berlin, really, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And um, another question mm -hmm. is um, with regards to uh, how many people are currently employed here at Zalando. So currently we have 15,000 employees and that is from head office to warehouse staff. So a really, really big um, uh, amount of people that are working for Zalando, which is, uh, I think, a great success story of the business. And as of those, um, it's pretty much 50-50 of um, uh, male versus female workers as well, which I think is a really, really great um, position to be in for Zalando. One other question just came up from uh, Mandy. What do you love um, the most about working at Zalando? Um, I guess uh, to me it's the diversity. Um, we have a lot of different backgrounds here at Zalando, um, which I really enjoy working with. Um, we are working in a very fast-paced environment, so yeah. things are never really getting boring. Um, we get a lot of room to actually um, explore things, and we have a lot of freedom to kind of live... Um, yeah, live out our roles in the way we think um, they are done best. So, I mean, I'm here for six and a half years and I'm super happy. So I guess um, it's obvious lot. that I love it. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, I think to echo that, um, something similar on my side, I feel the agility here at Zalando is, is amazing. You're able to kind of have a voice and have your voice be heard, um, which is very unique, I think. Mm. Um, and this, <laughs> the process of, of putting... A, it's an idea into action is quite quick. Mm -hmm. You see the results of your ideas quite quickly. Um, if you want to bring something to the board, you most certainly have the chance to do it and understand if we can follow that through, which nine times out of ten we certainly can follow yeah. through. Um, another question just came up from Eleonora. Um, well, what does it take to be um, part of the Zalando team? Um, I guess it really depends on in which team um, you actually want to want to come to. Um, for Zalando Lounge and especially the buying team, as I said, um, you need qualities like um, you have to be a very communicative and uh, open person. You have to be very convincing and compelling um, in order to kind of sell our, our business model. Um, on the other hand, you need the typical buying skills, like you have to be very analytical, you have to be very good with numbers, you have to have commercial acumen, but you also have to be very, very good in negotiating. As, um, as I said before, we are dealing 
with um, very high level um, stakeholders, usually when we're working with brands. Yeah, um, there's a question from Kirsten. How can I grow within the company and can I transfer between departments? So I can personally speak about this um, within my team. So I've had um, members of the team that have moved over from the planning side to the buying side. Um, I think if you express your interest and you show that you are passionate about the, the move that you want to make, um, I think that Zalando is completely... A, a company that supports the the move internally and we have not only teams that support each other but amazing systems training platforms that really really do help any sort of transferable um, skills within the company so yes definitely um, not only growth within the company but definitely can transfer within departments um, another question came up from Philip um, does one have to have experience from e-commerce to work at Zalando um, I would say no, it's not a must. Um, when working in buying, of course, um, you would need to have some buying experience, but it doesn't have to be in e-commerce. It could also be from a retail store, like a um, private label, um, or just a normal retailer, yeah. Um, there's another question here. What do you love most about working at Zalando? Um, I think, um, for me, it's... I know we kind of touched on this, but... Um, Definitely, it's it's the freedom to do what we want and um, having constant change at Zalando as well. I think it's a, a company that never stands still and I think this is why it's having the success that it has and um, coming up to 10 years old, the changes that the company has undertook and continues to undertake is a really, really exciting to be part of this growth um, and I believe that the growth strategy is you know only just beginning so it's really really a, a really big part of the business that I like to be involved in. Um, I just got another question. Uh, what benefits do you enjoy um, the most at Zalando? Um, I would say there are a lot, actually. Um, mm. We have our own gym. We have yoga classes. Um, we have free fruit. Um, we get have a lot of um, deals with other companies where we are getting uh, discounts, and of course we are getting a discount to shop at Zalando, which for me is actually the most um, the biggest benefit that we have. It's a big benefit, <laughs> but also quite dangerous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Often get the the uh, Zalando box delivered to my desk. Yeah. Um, Another question is how international is Zalando? Um, I would say it is very international. I'm just thinking um, within my buying team, we have um, people from Brazil, we have people from Poland, from France, um, of course from Germany, from Italy, um, and we're actually quite a small team um, within Zalando, so um, I think it's a very international company. Yeah, same for me. I have 12 members of the team, and that um, pretty much... <laughs> covers a lot of uh, Europe actually there's Portuguese Italian from the UK um, across the planning side as well within the team Polish and um, we have uh, Scandinavian as well so yeah. and Finnish yeah quite a lot actually now yeah. that I come to think of it yeah um, there's another question here from Giselle what do you look for when searching for new brands um, I think I mentioned it before I think the fact that we want something that stands out, um, something different that we haven't seen before, uh, whether that be from a brand that's you know challenging the status quo, they're slightly different from the brand portfolio that we have. We're very conscious on fast fashion that we don't want to cannibalise the current offer we have. So whether that be from an execution of somebody that's very, very fast to trend or it's about the price point, uh, there's a lot of elements in fast fashion that we look for. Um, but for us, it's it's very much about a, um, a brand that's very fast to market. We really want to be the first, and we want to be able to put that brand on the platform within Zalando. So for sure, that's what we're searching for within the new brands. And how we do that is many different ways. We're constantly on social media, so Instagram, Facebook, um, attending trade shows, um, MeCam, and also when the teams are out um, at store checks as well, so all over Europe looking at if there's any new brands coming up. Um, so, yeah, definitely exhausting all avenues to make sure we have the newest brands. Um, another question from Mandy is, um, what was the most risky buy you have uh, ever made? Um, 
That's difficult. I'm just trying to think. Um, one of our buyers just recently purchased um, a pretty broad collection of fake fur jackets. So we were a bit nervous if they would actually sell um, in this broad um, assortment. Um, but she had like the right uh, taste, I guess, and they did. So, but it was definitely a risk. I think it's actually a really interesting <laughs> question because this is one thing that I really look at for in a buyer is a risk taker because mm -hmm. without it, you don't learn. So um, for us, we have a, a risky buy coming up. I can't say too much, but we have a really important exclusive coming up mm -hmm. and we hope that the risk will pay off for sure. Um, another question from Philip is, how often do you recruit for roles in buying? Um, I would say... Um, we're actually constantly on the lookout for new talents. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as our team is getting bigger, Zalando is getting bigger in general. So we are always looking actually for new people. So um, yes, if you think that you're the right person, just uh, please apply. <laughs> <laughs> we're happy. Yeah, I think um, for mm -hmm. us with regarding the roles, uh, when I joined Zalando only under two years ago, I had a team of four and now mm -hmm. I have a team of 12. So that speaks for itself, the sheer growth in, in um, fast fashion footwear. Um, another question is, how do you measure the success of a buyer? Um, I think this is, is a number of things that can accumulate to the success of a buyer. I think um, it all stems from when the budgets are given at the start of the season. So a buyer is somebody that has a lot of agile, um, a, an agile approach, somebody that has confidence, somebody that's a risk taker. So all of those things that we've, we've mentioned and then how you apply that on a daily basis. So with your budget that you are given, you know, really push it, understand with the buyers um, within your team, understand with the planners and um, meeting with your brands to say, OK, this is where I want to push this um, budget this season, can we achieve it? And also coming up with strategic ideas of how to do that. So a buyer that really, for me, to measure their success is somebody that's thinking outside of the box, always taking that couple of steps <laughs> further and, and not completely um, you know, thinking for what should be. It's, okay, what can we really push for? That's how I would measure the success of a buyer. Um, another question from Kerstin is, are you attending industry events, events and uh, can one meet you there? Um, well, from a buying side, we are actually visiting all the relevant trade shows in Europe. Um, mm -hmm. We are, of course, at the Berlin trade shows, but we're also going to Copenhagen. We're going to the Pitti in um, Italy. And um, probably you could probably go to all the shoe fairs. Yeah, I do in Mecham <laughs> yeah. um, in Milan. Um, we do all of those that you've just mentioned as well. And um, most recently this um, February, myself and one of my buyers went to Vegas to the Magic Show to see footwear as well, which oh, is a great experience to further mm -hmm. our, you know, our, our range, understanding we were really lucky that we've found a new brand mm -hmm. there as well. So it was a great success for us. Um, I guess in terms of meeting, um, we don't have a booth there or something. So I guess if you really want to meet us, um, you just uh, send in an email and um, we try to arrange something. Um, another question is, how would you describe your, um, your leadership style? Um, well, at Zalando, we are always trying to, to lead in a very situational kind of way. So. Um, we have very, um, how do you call it, flat hierarchies, I guess. Um, so people can come up to us all the time and ask questions. Um, they can go to, this, to their skip level lead and we're just trying to, take, uh, to solve all the problems and um, take care of everything that's coming up. So we're very approachable, I would say. Yeah, I think um, I would like to think that my approach is open and very easy to kind of understand what my thought process is and I have kind of an open door um, mentality of, you know, I'm, I'm there, I like to be um, approachable and understand every angle of the business and understand the frustrations that may be and how to approach them in a quick, quick and timely manner. Um, the question from Barry, um, what has been the biggest buying challenge you've overcome? Um, I think probably this season has been tricky, um, as is every season, because there is no crystal ball with buying. Um, you have to, you know, again, that word agile risk taker, this is exactly what it is um, be, to be a buyer um, and thinking on your feet. So 
as anybody that is living in mainland Europe knows that we've, uh, we're still waiting on some good weather. We have a day here and a day there. And footwear is probably one of the toughest areas um, to sell when it's raining outside, to sell open sandals. So um, challenges that we have to face are the fact that we're, we've got stock in the business, um, but the customer isn't engaging. So what do we do? Um, you know, We think on our feet, we get together, we discuss it, we understand if there's pushes through marketing um, anything on social media that we can do whether we promote these particular styles and whether we um, go outside of the business to discuss with our brands any stock swaps so something that is working let's exchange that in season um, so there is a lot of um, challenges constantly and that's how we would approach to overcome of all of those problems within season mm. Um, there's another question regarding travels. How much do you travel and what is your favorite city to take inspiration from? Um, the buyers in, at Zalando Lounge, they're actually traveling quite recently. Um, they are visiting all the international, or like the European trade shows, mm -hmm. but they're also going um, and meeting their suppliers on a regular basis. So I would say that um, most of the weeks um, they are actually traveling. And uh, my personal favorite city to take inspiration from is actually Copenhagen. I do really love the, the trade shows there, but also just the look on the street when you walk through and like all the stores on High Street. I th really think that city is very inspirational. Yeah, for me, um, mm. how much do I travel? Well, I was in, to give you an example, I was in Cologne yesterday, I'm in Berlin mm. today, and I'm in Manchester tomorrow. So a lot <laughs> in, in, in short. Um, and my favorite city has to be uh, Milan. Uh, I love Italy, I love the, um, the charm and the confidence that comes with an Italian city, so it has to be Milan, yeah. There's another question from um, Philip. What does it take to be successful as a buyer at Zalando except for being a risk taker? Um, well, I can only speak or mainly speak for Zalando Lounge. Um, you have to be a very open person, you have to be very communicative, you have to be very good in um, negotiating and actually convincing people to, to work with you as, um, as we're working with so many different stakeholders. And um, as I said before, like we are negotiating on a very high level, so you have to be very, um, have to have a high self-esteem and just really feel comfortable with speaking to all kinds of people, I would say. Yeah, definitely. And there's another question here, how important is creativity for the role of a buyer? I definitely think it's really important um, to echo what you've just said, the analytical side and the reactivity, the agile, being a risk taker, all of those things, but also having a creative eye. I think you've got to understand what's on trend um, and buy into it um, because especially for me, speaking about category management, especially on young fast fashion, we have a consumer that is very, very, um, very needy of what we can give her. Um, so it has to be the latest styles at the right time, um, such as when I spoke about the buyer's picks with the dad sneaker. We also have more samples here. <laughs> Um, so styles like this, so Perspex is really big for us this season, so believing in something and making sure we're optimising on it as much as possible, so having that creative eye, being out on the high street, looking at um, certain bloggers, understanding what's trending and making sure that we're echoing that and believing in it as well, which is really important. Okay, another question here. What is the future of Zalando in terms of fashion? Um, I think the sky's the limit with fashion. Um, it's ever evolving. Um, there's always trends that are coming round. I, the dad sneaker again. I, in some part of me, wishes it hadn't come around again because it's not the prettiest thing, but it works and it's what the customer wants. So I'm, I'm after that. So I think... Um, the constant change within um, fashion is is ever evolving, and I think the fact that Zalando is now, you know, and will continue to be a really important um, brand within and on the mouths of any fashion um, stakeholder, and also any fashion icon, um, a person coming up and and wanting to buy from Zalando, buy from us the latest fashion, um, and I think we have to um, understand that. 
fashion, as I say, is evolving and we evolve and move just as fast as we can and making sure that uh, we use Zalando as the platform to keep reintroducing um, new brands but also nurturing the brands that we have and making sure we're optimising as much as possible. Another question just came up, um, how much space is still there for ideas and change? Um, well, I would say a lot uh, because Zalando is um, basically always changing all the time. Like um, mm -hmm. we have such a big company, but um, still very young actually. So and in order to grow and to expand more, we need to change all the time. We need to have all the employees to bring in new ideas and um, really participate in, in our growth and really identify themselves with our company. So um, yes, we actually do have a big need for new ideas um, in order to, to complete our change. Yeah, I think that's where, where we spoke about mm. before, the idea for change and how you have a voice and that's mm. something that we love about our job and yeah. I hope that, you know, I'm very confident that our teams are, uh, echo the same where, you know, you do have this choice to bring your ideas to the table and also get them uh, seen through and actually get them put into yeah. work, which is, I think, a really important part. And um, we're out of time. So yeah. thank you so much for joining us and for all of your questions. Yeah. Thank you from thank us. Thank you. Great. Thanks.